Like the food pantry is closed. And I was like, says on this app, you guys are right, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I really don't think it means. He's like, how do you not know what this means? You are on the app. You should know what you guys provide. And I was like, okay. So I asked Junior, and the guy's like, you guys are on the blah, blah, blah. And I, I can't hear anything, by the way. Oh, it's the. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear us? I can hear you now. Can, Can you, you mute think? yourself, though? Okay. Thank you. Okay, one more time. Uh, welcome to our weekly TSAC meeting, September 22nd, 2003. Would anyone like to start reading the mission statement? Any questions? Thank you. To support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Everyone who agrees says hi. Hi, hi. Any abstentions? Any anyone? Any rejections? No. Um, uh, let's start with attendance. I'll start with you, Ree. I am here. Ree is here. Oh, me. Uh, Michael Warner present. Alejandro Casillas present. Danny Palacios present. In Trujillo present. <laughs> Kristen Nagar present. Matthew Rathbone present. Thomas Cheney present. Paul Nelson present. John Nelson. Uh, William Coates present. Thanks, folks. Um, okay, let's start with the approval of the agenda. Does everybody have had a chance to take a look at it? Yeah. We'll start passing them around. Um, to make a small point of order. Thomas and I have to leave for a wedding around two o'clock. And so I would just ask uh, colleagues, if you could make your reports brief, we might be able to get to our item in the agenda. Um, but in the, in the event that we don't, we'll, we'll likely uh, motion to table it for next week. But just want to let, let you know, we'll probably out of here soon. Okay. Kind of that event, so. I, have a, I have a friend tying the knot. I'm really happy to see it off. Okay, um, beautiful. Other than that, any motions to amend the agenda? Okay, right. everybody who agrees with passing the agenda said aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Starts. Okay. Um, Let's we'll start with our board and committee announcements and updates, Mike. Yes. So. I'll keep it as short as I can, but I did just get out of my trustee meeting for a quarterly, so I have a lot to share. Um, in particular, uh, lot, lots going on in the university. Um, I will pass this around, but this is a, Dr. Simpkins gave us his annual impact report. This is the reports of a lot of different kind of functions that are happening on campus, so like CMEI, their the reports are in here, um, how it's possible, um, Rover's Promise, a lot of programs. This is kind of like the report from it, uh, from these programs. So I'll let that kind of sit around. Um, in terms of what we went over, uh, some good news. Enrollment is up, so we are no longer in the uh, the curve of going down. Um, I think we're officially allowed to say we have about 17,000 students enrolled here now, which is awesome. Um, with that, um, I believe faculty salaries are also going up as well. So um, I believe like the, and I believe this has to do some legislation as well, but the median income was like 35,000 for like a very low paid salary. Now it's going up to 55,000. So that's good to hear as well. Um, what else was here? Um, and if I don't have like my full notes, I will give them next week when I can. When I can. Um, projects going on. There's a lot of projects going on in the university strategy wise. C2 Hub is probably the most one we're going to see most recently. Um, that's the new building being built for it. Um, coming up in, I believe, 2026. Um, and then the following year um, being built should be faculty housing and student housing, as well as the new health institute on campus. So those are going to be the new kind of buildings you'll see around campus. We'll probably be long gone by then, but that's worth bringing up. Um, there was a big update on the cross-functional task force with Dr. Mora and Dr. Jeffers. Um, they're still kind of finding or doing a fine tooth comb through like what the faculty kind of wants because it, it's not really a one shoe fits all kind of deal. Um, so there'll be more updates there. Um, what was it here? Um, so the, the board of trustees has um, recommitted to keeping their sustained racial justice task force um, committee as well. 
Um, so Dr. Michael Benitez gave a really good uh, passionate presentation on why it should be kept and um, why it should stay the name it currently is. So their work continues on uh, through that. Um, and I think I will have a better update next week, but I also give an update on student government. Um, I give up what we're doing, some initiatives, some goals we have. And I also gave some shout outs to the committee chairs, to Gabe in particular for being the ABOD rep as well. Um, they love to hear that you're gonna be on the very board of directors as well. So um, a lot of information, I'll probably have a condensed version next week for y'all. I just got a meeting, so let's go, so. Thank you, But thank you for your work, Mike. I wanted to ask if you could, if there's a way we could get more copies of this and or a digital version would suffice. That's all I have. Um, I will, yes, I will work on it. I got that yesterday. Um, I can email some council for it has that cool. one. Right. So I appreciate so. you. Right, perfect. Thank you for weathering those meetings. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Stake up reps. Sure. Okay, so we had our state had meeting last Tuesday, you know, so fun, so fun. <laughs> um, we learned some really important things. First off, I am now the chair, the interim chair of the sustainability. Uh, yeah, from the sustainability committee from SACAB. Uh, for now, we're still waiting on our CCD reps. Uh, we have one as of now, but we haven't met them yet. So, you know, that's fun too. Um, and we found out something very, very interesting. So, typically 2.30 is a student lounge. It is classified under SACAB as a student lounge. It's that building with like the pinball machine and like this little bakery area that's like new. Like it, they're open, you know, based on certain schedules. Um, but this is a student lounge now, right? And it supposedly has been since like last year, I believe. Um, and we like didn't know this. Um, and so right now we're in the process of naming that lounge. Um, I suggested that we keep it as Ziggy's Hub because everybody already knows, you know, what that was, what that space was. The continuing that legacy, um, but we found that information out. However, that space cannot be rented out as, as of now um, because uh, the previous state cap wanted it to be more of like a student like lounge, very like communal, communi communal, yeah, communal area instead of like a, a separate place that could be rented out and so just kind of open to all the students here. Um, so that space is there, so everyone knows. It's typically 2.30, awesome. And then we also did, I shout out on office hours. Um, right now, SACAB is doing office hours by appointment only. Yeah. Did Mike have a question? Oh, just, just some clarify. Yes, we decided for that to be, I did, I think it was really bad at communication. Like no one knew that's a lounge, but like hopefully they promote that more. But um, the goal is for like, I believe the term was to like have like a meal like that. This be like a little cafe style. That's what they wanted to back there. They wanted to put like an ice cream parlor in there. But I think they're what they're gonna do is they're gonna do a rotation of vendors which can occupy the kitchen area of that space and the rest of it's all for students. So I believe that's what's happening there. So just a quick question for consideration. Um as it's supposed to be a lounge area, is there any kind of um way it could be reserved for events from students without having to pay for something? Uh so right now we because of the nature of that lounge, it wants, it's very like communal, so it cannot be reserved um, because the, the, the previous state capital just wanted it to be like an area all students could go in whenever they, they needed to. Okay. And not have like, like that issue of like, oh, you know, like it's reserved, so I can't be here. Um, but it's kind of more so just like a relaxing socializing area okay. versus like, an event area. Is it small? I haven't been in there. It's where the, the bank is. The, okay. Right under, right under the Senate one. Okay. Um, it has a pinball machine and all. Oh, where they had the big posters and where things for sale. So that was, oh, right. Okay. Okay. So you could actually have a pop up type of event there. If, if everyone was included, you could just come in and, like, we could do a food thing there, for instance, you know, like we did in Multicultural Lounge if we wanted, yes. right? Yes. Okay. As long as we didn't theoretically, yes. Okay. But they're trying to stay away from students preserving it, so it's solely a gathering space. I understand. Mm -hmm. So the other two are still preserved. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. Sorry for the interruption. No. Um, and then one thing that I was going to bring up. Uh, 
I know that John had brought up, like, I think it was last meeting, um, that he ran into some problems where he had gone to the a student space, but it had been to it out. So this space kind of like essentially solves that problem because AMTEC will never be renting it out to a third party or a paid professional one. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And um, to what Mike was saying earlier, what AHEC decided is that they're trying to run it as sort of like a pop up shop. So they're bringing in different vendors uh, that they normally use. Obviously, they can't bring in competition. So other vendors like they're never going to have a coffee pop up because of the Starbucks. They can't have anyone else other than Starbucks selling coffee inside of the Tivoli. Um, but the kitchen space will be something that AHEC is utilizing. Any questions? Um, for so seeing that the the Tivoli store is like closing, did they mention anything what they're going to be doing with that space? Or? No, but we can ask. So that would honestly be a good spot for a student better. So. When I was there last week, the gentleman behind the counter said another organization is coming in to set up much of the same shop. That's yeah. what he said. Okay. For I don't know, that's not an authority speaking, just someone that was working there. Else, okay. um, judiciary committee. Do you have anything for us? No, but I am meeting Monday with Armando and Dr. Baron, and we're going to start working on this. And I'll have a report for next week. Awesome. Perfect. Wait, can you say awesome? Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Budget committee, Alejandro. Um. Just a quick update. So today we had another meeting and we basically just um, talked about the amount we spent so far um, up to now, from the beginning of the year to now. We've only spent a total of $5,000 over time. Uh -huh. I just, oh, okay. I just want to clarify, I'm still getting the stuff for the last two events, so that number will be going up. I just need to compile it and send it to our yes. um, just, just putting out there, it's probably double that. I'm making sheets in Armando, question mark. Um, just just because I know I've been, yeah. I've been kind of flirting with budget for a minute now. I'm like, that's probably double. We're probably just like double so far. Anybody else? Okay. Anybody on the committee thought about um, uh, no major new updates. There was an idea uh, brought to me by a student that Denny had directed my way uh, about a sustainability fair of sorts, uh, where we had, you all have seen the thrifts, uh, the, the thrift shops kind of set up on the very walkway. The idea would be to try and do something like that, maybe inside or outside, um, and just also have it be kind of a larger conversation about sustainability. They wanted it to have like an educational aspect to it. Um, and I figured one of the things that we could offer in that conversation is help securing the space and and promoting that event. I, I think it'd be cool. So like a um, swap meet? Not, not really a swap meet. And there might be some elements of that. Like if you wanted to raise that as an idea with this student, mm -hmm. but it'd be more like a sustainability fair. I'd imagine ASCP would probably get involved and maybe have their free thrift and there'd be swap meetish elements to it. I've never been to a swap meet, so you'll have to excuse some of my ignorance, I guess. Any other questions or anything? Thanks. 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 Um, when is the sustainability committee going to meet? And officially meet, I got to hear back from Naomi on that. And so, you know, how busy her schedule is combined with mine, it's been a it's been a difficulty, I'll admit. Uh, but we're going to have some meetings here soon. Um, I imagine she reported on the meeting with Cassie last week. Um, when I missed that student government day, I missed the meeting with Cassie as well. Uh, we're going to be meeting on the 6th, though, so I can have a conversation with her, too. So our work with ASCP will be informed by um, like the wealth of information they already have and a lot of the stuff they're doing. Um, but yeah, nothing else really to report. Appreciate the question. Awesome. Okay, so several one um, now since I'm the interim chair of like sustainability for state cap and stuff. Mm -hmm. If there's like any way that we can collaborate or anything, just let me know. Certainly. That second, how many people in total are in your committee? And third. Has anything been done about the, the green purchasing agreement? Because I know we have money allocated to that. And I know there's probably student boards that are already trying to find events and all that. And they need to be aware of this. No. And so I'll admit the green uh, the green purchasing agreement, we, we probably could have done the transfer of information on, on operating that a little better. Um, so we could use some help on that front. I don't know how much Naomi knows about it, but I know no, I, I know nearly nothing about how to how to, how to manipulate it. Um, I'll say right now the committee is just uh, just she and I. I think 
I, I'd encourage John to consider hopping on the committee because he had had a really good idea. Um, it escapes me at this moment. Um, and we welcome other people who would want to participate, yourself included, especially given your position in the SACAB. Uh, yep. Matt. Actually, mine kind of goes off of that, your last statement there. Yeah. Um, when you have the committee meetings, if you just send an invite to everybody, um, and also at the time on the 6th, if you can send that out, I'd like to try at least attend that. You're welcome to attend. I will say, um, you know, we'll aim to have our meetings uh, posted on the agenda like we like we did last year mm -hmm. in a way that people can, like, attend them like they attend these ones. Is that um, it's about the financial aid stuff, right? No, this would yeah. be sustainability stuff. Oh, okay. And, and you're all good. Uh, I'll say that the meeting with Cassie will be discussing uh, sustainability okay. projects. We can get involved in Oh, okay. What meeting are you thinking of? Well, maybe we'll talk more about this yeah. later, huh? Okay. Any other questions? Sure. Oh, not question. If I can, uh, can you just please add me to like your committee chat? I sure. Would love to get sure. We'll do. Thank you all for your question. No, no further questions. Nothing on the okay, beautiful. Uh open floor announcements. We missed PR. I'm sorry? PR. Oh PR. I don't I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're okay. Go ahead. Um <laughs> well, I just want to thank everybody who made the last two events possible. Um it was hectic, especially fall fest, but I think we went off really well. Um and between bulk mm -hmm. events, I put it in our um, general chat. Um, I don't feel comfortable putting in this chat just because there's two ID numbers in it. Um, but a result, we have like 57 results of the survey we posted for both events. Um, so everybody can view those through the chat. And oh, you know, I was well, I, you and I are probably going to say the same thing. Uh, if you want to say it, that okay. One. Okay, I'll say that. Well, um, I mean, wait, hold on. Are you done speaking? Yeah, yes. Okay. So okay. I will I will start with positives. The event, like Wednesday, was great. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we gave out probably thousands, like, probably, we served thousands of students, probably mm -hmm. watermelon uh, ice, <laughs> our cool spiced melon uh, on a hot day. I mean, it was very popular mm -hmm. um, and it's very innovative. Um, the just three governments, their lines were nothing compared to ours. So yeah. good work on that. Good work with the people who attended the events. Um, and who also made it possible so like i mean the first three kind of three people were there both days and kind of really did it was me denny and matt um with help from um various kind of partners like kristen alejandro driving the truck and then will coming in as well these events need to be a little more better staffed um it's a little unacceptable that means Denny without the entire day um without break serving in matt sorry i see without the entire day serving melons um for that four hour period so i mean i believe we, we almost had a fading incident and we definitely need to learn like, when we do an events you get the, the council in general we need to keep mm -hmm. each other accountable to showing up to these events because i mean that was unacceptable to say the least um so in, in the future in the mm -hmm. next events um i highly encourage attendance full attendance from full council if not i'll be making a judiciary committee matter because we have been keeping track who's been going to events so that has been kept track of by our executive assistants so i'm just putting that out there now um, it was a great event. We need better attendance from us next, us as our staff next time. So there you go. That's all I have. Thank you. And that will relate to, I don't think I want to vote it on this week, but I have a bill that relates to some of that topic that I'll be presenting later in this meeting. Anybody else have anything to say? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. PR. Oh. Okay. Very good. Moving up to open door announcements. Like, do you have something? Okay, I'm gonna go after Gabe. No, I'm going to go after Okay. I think there's something I forgot to mention. Uh, with SACAB is we are also, we like everyone in SACAB, or at least like me, Kristen, uh, our chair, and uh, the team member, but I think name is Jenny. I'm not sure. Um, we're we're about to meet with an APEC financial person. So if you have any questions, you know, I just send them to us. So we can ask them. I have a Paul and a star. Did you email this as well? No, go ahead, Paul. How soon do you need that? And what's the best way for me to get it to you? Um, I think like 
team, email, okay. you know, whichever way you want to do that. Um, and I, I remember our date real quick. Um, I think by, if I can have them like by Tuesday. Okay, yeah. yeah. I can probably try and send it to you after the meeting. Um, I have like eight questions about parking, which I'm sure we'd all be dying to know. Uh, yeah. They wouldn't answer us last year when we sent them this information request um, twice. So you can maybe ask them in person. Hold them to the account. Cool. Awesome. Anyone else? Beautiful. Okay. As we have had uh, multiple concerns about sharing our communal and general space, uh, we came to sort of a temporary system. One, uh, CMEI gave away, they were given six lockers, and they have given away three. There are still three. The orgs all know, they have all been contacted, and they are using them. Our solution as TSAC has been, I did, I, well, we put two shelves on the corner of the office. They are all numbered and labeled. There's a sign-up sheet that requires uh, the student to tell us what shelf they're using, what organization they're coming from, the name of the person who's checking in their items, their student number, as well as the person who's checking out and their student uh, number as well. Um, that would be the system. The light, anybody will you? Mind pulling in the floor space. Thanks, Kenny. Uh, we have made three forms. One, two, three. Yeah, one to reserve the space because we have had people ask about reserving the general space for open houses or other events. So there is one for that. There is a liability form for people. Do not make us responsible for if something gets lost, you know, if something disappears. Uh, it is extensive, has a lot, has a lot of terms um, to make sure to, that we're offering equity. And then there is another, well, yeah, and then there's another one, another liability for, for the use of space, not just for the use of the shelves. Uh, hold on, have you on this deck? Cool, cool. Thank you. And and I have all of the stack as well. And I also have a form. Oh, in order to reserve the space, the form is going to be like a, a Google Doc, not to the start of the shelf, but the actual space if they want to do any events. This is this is just to over equity, you know, within our general and communal space in our office. Okay, I have Michael on the stack, and then I have Paul. Say, so, Ken. Okay. So, fabulous job to whoever made this liability form. Actually, and Kenny and Denny, can we call that collaboration all three? Um, is CMEI in this as well? They're excluded from liability as well, correct? Uh, no, but it's a good update. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we should probably add that in there, I'd say. Because um, I don't want, like, anything going back to CMEI per se, uh, any kind of liability be thrown back their way unnecessarily or unjustly. Um, secondly, um, in terms of this, they can store the space, store stuff in their space, correct. Um, this actually kind of goes into it. Um, they don't have access to the office. No. So what, and I haven't looked at the spreadsheet currently, but I would recommend counselors who have not put in their availability to fill out and maybe even fill in some of the gaps of those um, of those uh, spaces so we can throw that out the window. Hey, Come in during this time to go to the office. And X person should be there. Um, Kenny's there 20 hours a week, but um, it's not his job. Exactly. So um, we should definitely be filling in and being there and present in the space. And then uh, last thing, office is closed at 5 o'clock each day. Is yes. that cool? As long as that's in there, we should be good. Okay. Paul? Oh, you got Reed. I don't know. Oh. I'm talking a lot. Uh, go ahead, Reed. Just. Um, also, if there's some event, I mean, this is great for organizing and um, making sure that there's no um, conflicts with events. So having the forms filled out, I get it. But I also um, would say that if if we're not filling a, a gap on a day, if they have something in mind on a certain day and can let us know, then someone can change plans or try to make sure we can be there. So don't let that be a limiting factor, I'd say. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I I'm, more, I'm more worried about liability forms and make sure that things are structured and that there's documentation of things. 
but I'm sure we'll, we'll make things happen if possible. But, okay. And can it not run any time after five if we are there, if they have a specified end time that's reasonable, like six, let's say, or something? Yeah, I think that would case by case. Yeah, okay. we, would, we would have to figure that out. Sure. Um, okay. Yeah. Just suggesting things off the off the cuff. Thanks. Okay. Um, I'll keep this brief. I have a lot more, but I'll um, be succinct for this for, for the sake of our guests and stuff. Um, I wanted to speak to how this may affect the advocacy work that uh, Thomas and myself are engaged in. I wanted to say to my to my fellow members of the Student Advocacy Council, I wish to bring the attention um, to our concerns around these policies that are being suggested that restrict the use of our office space by requiring the storage of materials away from our desks. I, I want to recognize the good work that's been put into a, like getting some lockers for the student orgs, and I have no doubt that we'll be able to make good use of them. Um, but there's other things to consider here. While this move is purported to establish equity amongst student organization, it overlooks the special nature and purpose of our presence on the council, Thomas and myself. To clarify, while the SDS as an organization was not elected to this council, Thomas and I ran for and were elected as counselors based on a progressive platform that resonated with a significant portion of the student body. Our roles in SDS are aligned with our responsibilities as counselors, both capacities or vehicles through which we engage in meaningful grassroots organizing, advocacy, and education. Um, it's important that we distinguish that the materials that we keep in our office, be they banners, pamphlets, or other resources, are not mere decor or clutter of any student organization. They are the essential tools of the advocacy work that we are elected to undertake, and that when students cast their votes for us, they were expressing a desire for active representation against pressing issues like tuition hikes and social injustice. Uh, in essence, the students that have chosen us as their advocates for, ex for exactly these types of campaigns that we undergo and they've undertaken previously. The idea that the use of our office space needs to be curtailed for the sake of equity amongst student organizations fails to recognize that equity does not mean identical treatment. Rather, it entails fair treatment that it considers the unique functions and demands of each entity and each person. Our election to the council stands as a mandate from the student body indicating their specific needs and aspirations that we have pledged to uphold. Given our unique role and the expectations that come with it, relegating our campaign materials to storage hampers, our, our ability to effectively serve our constituents, we advocate for the right to use our elected office to its fullest capacity, respecting the trust that students have placed in us and honoring our commitment to active and effective advocacy. We urge that our colleagues and uh, the uh, and our advisors reevaluate this decision and consider the unique circumstances that our rules present. Our office must continue to serve not just as a workspace, but as the center for the kind of engagement and advocacy that our electorate has called for and that our whole operation here is named after. And that's all I'll say on it. There's a lot more I wanted to say, but just to cut it short. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, anybody else has anything for a panel? Um, Did you work? It's very quick. It, is it? Oh. No, it's it's about the attendance, uh, or the office hours attendance. Um, John Nelson needs to put in his hours. Uh, Naomi, you need to put in your hours as well, and Will, you need to put in your hours. So, um, do that promptly, and I will post that on the window. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to give a. Not a major update at all, but me and Paul yesterday attended the meeting with CDHE, the College of Department of Higher Education. Um, it was mostly just like an introductory kind of meeting. Um, not a lot was directly taken from it. We got a lot of resources that we, well, at least that I know I'm going to be looking at to see how we can utilize. But I think that's about it, unless Paul has anything else to add. I have thoughts, but I'm happy to condense them and put them in our chat right. for the sake of time. Thanks, Paul. Mm -hmm. Great response. To that. Okay. This came up in the trustees meeting. The <clears throat> Department of Higher Education, or whatever, CDHE, suffered a data breach um, very recently, oh, right. and it affects probably about every student in Colorado. Right. And um, this is something they have not really publicly said as much. They're trying to not, not say they're covering it up. But they did a really bad job of letting students know who might be affected. Uh, MSU Denver um, is tr as put out if you were affected. You can put out a link, and I'll see if we can find it again. But next time y'all meet with them, why why are we so quiet on a, a data breach that could affect every student in Colorado? Uh, um, and that was presented to the board of trustees meeting today. So it's uh, something that we should be worried about, and that's something I will gladly attend the meeting or even give you some briefing questions yeah. on um, so coming forward because I think it's unacceptable. So. Yeah, I was unaware of that issue, but I would. Definitely more than happy to bring it up in the next meeting so when all the 
other representatives are also away. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Can I cut in really quick? Well, it is one o'clock. It is time for public comment. So we are going to keep going. I just wanted to bring that up uh, until someone shows up. Then we will stop. Just to clarify, you all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay. So they have to stop. Perfect. In the absence of public comment, could I offer a quick thought on the on the data breaching? Sure. Okay. Um, there's also been a big breach with Microsoft too. I don't know if it's just Teams, but I, I read about it like a day ago, and it's pretty pretty expansive. And uh, I would just suggest really strongly that everybody change all their passwords. Um, you know, turn tinfoil hat for two seconds, but there's some serious uh, data breaches, and we should consider working with ITS to try and raise the level of uh, like basic security uh, and maybe some steps the students can take to protect their identities in the face of the, because the the breach that Mike's talking about had social security card numbers. And so if you dealt with the Colorado Department of Higher Education and given them your social security card number, AKA anybody that's enrolled in their school, yeah, yeah. it's like this should raise a flag and you know, we have to do something about it. Yeah. Reach out to ITS or something. Didn't want to store me on that. Okay, I'm so sorry, just quick point. Do you, do you see it, Penny? Awesome. Perfect. Um, okay, Faculty Senate. John, do you have anything for the Faculty Senate? Not, hello, not at the moment. Okay. Uh, on my side, on academic policy, uh, they did vote to move the required uh, upper division uh, upper division credits for undergrad uh, from 40 to 39, so it would be divisible in the general spectrum. And also they are working on letting grad students know specifically that if they register for a class and they are waitlisted, if someone drops, they will put you into the list and you have to drop yourself out manually. Otherwise you will be charged for the class. Um, so if you know anyone in the grads, like in the grad program, let them know, please. Um, because this can severely affect their financial aid. And just like financial case in general. Uh, I did put a poster in and for Fall Fest, and we had one in our tent. So some people found out. But again, just let's find out how we can spread the word. And that is it for me. Quick point of order is Dr. Simpkins coming today? Yes. Okay. Quick uh, comments. Um, if you want to give me some more information, I could make a post for a social media as well. I would appreciate that. Okay, we're good on that. Uh, Paul, Dean of Council? Uh, no updates. In no. fact, uh, the, the Dean of Council meets once a month. Um, same with the uh, Council of Chairs and Directors, which uh, there's been some flip up now. Apparently, we never had a spot on the Dean of Councils. If we really want one, we can have it. Just the meeting's going to be this next coming month. Um, whichever one I end up going to, I'm in conversation with Mike and Dr. Barone on which one we should end up going to. It'd be more fruitful for us. I'll report back on that. Um, one of the things that was said during the last meeting, I'll say, is that one of our professors was asking why we have the A in cadre if we're locking all the doors. So there was some concern amongst faculty about the new ID requirements. Let's talk about this. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Um, okay, sorry. Will, do you have anything for the tri institutional? Uh, currently, nothing. Um, let's see. Uh, nothing yet. We are set to be next Wednesday and I'll bring up more information then. But uh, for Fall Fest, I did notice that the other student governments were there, which is good. So we were all together, which is always a good thing. Any okay, advisor updates. I think. Dr. Brown, do you want to go first? Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. OK, um, so I have a list here of updates. The first is President's Cabinet. I just want to remind us, and I'm not positive if you all have already voted on or decided who will be uh, representing um, TSAC at the next President's Cabinet meeting. 
which will be on October 19th. So we need to have two reps, one for October 19th and then one for the November 16th meeting. I want to acknowledge that the invitation was not sent to Gabe um, and we are going to want to be more proactive this time to make sure that information is getting out. Um, and I will do my best to follow up and follow through with Ed Brown on that. So I really wanna make sure I'm getting that information over to him as soon as possible um, so I can close the loop on that. Um, so that's first and foremost. Um, and then the, and we still have a little bit of time, but just wanted to remind you all that that needs to happen. And if you can please just send me the names, that would be great. The next thing is around space. I have been having lots and lots of meetings about space, um, MSU Denver specific space, as well as with um, senior leaders um, within AHEC um, over this past week. And I'm going to be leading a lot of work around space um, over this next um, year. And so I just wanted to let you all know that um, I know that space is a big issue and it's going to continue to be a very um, contentious issue with some of the buildings closing down this coming spring with renovations to central and west classroom. Um, and I know that um, student students and specifically I think student organizations are expressing a lot of needs around space and I recognize that and we are trying to do our best um, collectively to work on these space issues with AHEC and with um, senior leaders in general um, within MSU Denver and so lots of things are going on there um, and please know that Taylor and I are advocating for storage space specifically for student orgs as well as meeting spaces um, and I now have a better understanding of some of the nuances and some of the um, expectations around um, space utilization and space requests from AHEC and I just want to remind us that policies and protocols are in place for a reason, whether that's with AHEC or with CMEI for student orgs. And you all are now establishing your own in terms of your space usage within TSAC. And I really want to encourage us to not only think about what is the intention and why we have those things in place, but make sure that we are following those policies and protocols, because I want you to know that I am absolutely encouraging my team to do that within CMEI um, and in other areas. And um, I am working closely with AHEC to make sure that we are also being um, supportive of their policies and that they are supporting ours. And that is going to continue to be the case. And so that might um, cause some tension because I think there are a lot of things that are being put in place now that more people are in person and having a lot of space needs but people need to be planful and proactive in their planning of events and needs in order for things to happen effectively and efficiently and please know that I am going to um, uphold those policies and so are others around the ways that things need to happen so I encourage you all to share that sentiment with student orgs as you are meeting with them and advising them around, you know, making sure that they are following the student org handbook um, and working closely with AHEC um, on the ways that they are um, planning for space usage and also assure them that we are working to advocate for additional storage spaces, hangout spaces, um, community spaces, and all of those things as there are a lot of transitions happening in the Tivoli. Um, the other thing that I wanted to make sure that um, I also mention is that, hold on, I have notes. Oh, the accountability um, committee or judicial judiciary committee, you all keep referring to it as. Um, I really want to share with you all that I want to get away from using the terms judiciary and um, and I will propose this along with um, Re, where get, Re and I and Armando have a meeting next week to talk through this a little bit more. And I want to work closely with Re on developing a proposal around this. But language matters. And I really want us to get away from punitive and deficit language around accountability. I don't think that that's helpful. And I think that it's harmful in some ways. And um, based on our experiences over the past few years, I really want us to get away from that. And I want us to go towards more, a more neutral um, way in which we're communicating around accountability and community standards. And so I um, want to remind us that next week uh, I've invited 
Thomas and Elise to come in to help you all with working on developing those community standards. And we all need to identify, it, it will definitely happen during your normal meeting time, um, but we need to like figure out, is it going to be, they've asked for 90 minutes, is it going to be 90 minutes during the you know, half hour of business and the 90 minutes of meeting with them, or will you all want to extend your meeting? And I think Matt is working on figuring that out um, with you all, and it is on the agenda. So I just wanted to make sure that I remind you all of that. And until we have those community standards um, and norms set in place that are coming from you all, it is, um, it's going to be really difficult to establish this committee because the committee will then help to, um, operationalize those things, right? So we really need this to happen. And if it doesn't happen, then it's going to impede um, any process from happening in terms of the accountability committee. Um, so that's me holding you all accountable that I need you all to engage in this process with us in order for it to be fruitful and for it to have um, positive outcomes. The other thing I wanted to share is that um, I will not be here next week. Um, I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. I think I mentioned that for the Seal of Excellencia national meeting. You may or may not know that MSU Denver was selected um, to receive the Seal of Excellencia as um, the first institution in Colorado um, to receive the Seal of Excellencia for our work around serving our Latina, Latino, Latine um, community. And so I will be going with Dr. Mora, Dr. Del Real, and Dr. Benitez um, to go and be a part of that meeting. So I will not be here, but I'm really excited about that. And I've been here for 20 years now and doing this work around HSI. So this is a personal thing that I'm really proud of. And you all should be really proud of the work that we are doing, not just for our Latino students, but for all students um, in raising the needs of our underserved populations. So excited about that. And you will be hearing more about that. And I'll be inviting you all to um, some of the things going on around that. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to share is NASPA is doing, and I forget what NASPA stands for. If Armando, if you know, if you can put it in the chat, because I forget. But NASPA um, is the, I think, National Association of Student Affairs Professionals um, is going to be conducting a um, program review of student affairs and um, the division. And so we are, over the next few months, being um, evaluated across the division um, that Dr. Simpkins oversees, and um, we're uh, doing different types of focus groups, meetings, surveys, um, and lots and lots of work where they're really digging deep into our organizational structure and um, identifying areas of growth and areas of strength and figuring out, you know, giving us a report by December. And so I was asked this past week um, to recommend two representatives from TSAC um, to serve on a student committee. And so I'm just letting you all know that I had a deadline that was Wednesday. So I recommended Gabe Trujillo because of his role in SACAB, because I think he has that broader um, tri-institutional view. Plus he's been in TSAC for a while. So I thought he might be able to offer some historical context to the evolution of our student government structure. And then I also um, recommended Alejandro uh, Casillas um, to offer his perspective around the budget and um, some of our challenges, I would say, around the budget um, and budget allocations and some of our needs there. But in addition to that, also to offer the perspective around his role within fraternity and sorority life, because that's a pretty big group on campus, too. Um, so those are all my updates. I know it's a lot, but um, there's a lot going on right now and more to come. So thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. All your hard work. <laughs> Not my hard work, our hard work. <laughs> Go ahead, Will. Uh, real quick question, Dr. Barone. Um, do you know when potentially the construction will be done? Like by, by what year? Probably a few years, a year, two years. Are you, Are you talking specifically about West Classroom and Central? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so yeah, so anyone who's had class over there knows that that those rooms and that space really needs a lot of updating. And so it's the HVAC system that they are um, 
I don't know, I guess they're fixing it. it's like way outdated. And so it's my understanding that after spring break, many of the classrooms as well as offices, physical spaces are being re-roomed or put online, or they're still figuring all of that out and sorting through that across campus. And so it's going to happen around spring break. And then um, it's my understanding that the renovations are going to take place all the way through next fall. Um, so several months, they're hoping to get it done sooner rather than later, but it will at least be offline until next fall. And I know there are a lot of concerns and questions around access to buildings and all of those things and I get it and I've been frustrated being locked out of a building myself so I know the pain of that um and I know that it also has to do with a lot of concerns around safety and security as well um there have been some incidents on campus around some of our transient populations and um because we're in downtown Denver things happen and so um I think that's why those calls are being made um is because of safety and security reasons um, and because there aren't as many people in person. And so I, I hear you all and believe me, we hear it from from all areas of the university that there are lots of concerns around accessibility. Um, and the best thing I can tell you is that please carry your student ID and encourage other students to take your ID wherever you go. I will also say student IDs are being looked at and your IDs, all of our IDs and access to spaces is being closely monitored. And so I am going to share with all of you that it's really important not to be handing your student ID to other people to use, especially to utilize secured spaces like your offices um, or any other spaces that you might have specific privileges for, because if that is reported or we find out about that, your access might be restricted. So when you're talking about providing access to student orgs, I wanna be really clear that you all need to make sure that you're available and present um, when you're providing that access and don't be handing your student ID out to other folks because you all do have privileged access. And so I wanna make sure that you all know that if you are doing that, that you run the risk of losing your access to privileged places. So access um, is gonna be a big thing over this next year. Thank That's you. It. She covered everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, Armando. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> Even that we have guests and you guys have to leave at a certain time. Um, to be moved up into the agenda. That'd be lovely if we could do that. I uh, uh, honestly, it's this is on me that our poor guests have been here this long. I, I, I. Miguel had asked me when the best time to send them would be, and I had apparently said one o'clock. So it is really on me, gang. I'm sorry. Um, that'd be great if we could do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I motion that we move up. Congratulations. The meeting update for Matt, Matt and Paul as the first order of business. Second. Okay, hey, everybody. Oh, the yeah. We did an open announcement. We already did that. Yeah. Okay. Then we're moving to Miguel and Rowdy's corner. Yeah. That's what I see. Okay. Also, yep. just read my reports. So we can start from there. Yeah. 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 You only need more than 20 minutes. Oh, lovely. Work great. Resolutions later as well. Oh, and honestly, if we want to, if Tom's going to pass these out, but if you want to just put your attention towards the presentation, it'll be a separate thing. Um, everybody who agrees on moving this as a first order of new business, say aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Emily, Miguel, you have the floor. Oh no, Miguel's not here. Thank you. I'm delicate. Are you going to be presenting for us, Angelica? My team and I will be. So you just walked in here with a test. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. But we are going to do more of a verbal presentation. We do have um, this that got sent out by Miguel. I believe everyone has access to this. This is just the budget for Rowdy's Corner for 23-24 um, academic school year. Um, we can start by introducing ourselves. Like I was saying, this morning will be like a verbal presentation. My name is Angelica. I use she, her pronouns. I am the communications and locality manager at Rowdy's Corner. Pass it over to Terry. Yeah, my name is Terry Kidges. I'm the head of sales at 
Perfect. So here are all work study students. Um, everyone who works at Rody's Corner goes to MSC Denver and study public health and nutrition. And today we're just representing uh, Rody's Corner and celebrating our wins. Um, I'm sure some of you or all of you may have heard of it so far. Um, we are serving as of today, we have just under 1,400 transactions a week. Um, and we are in the need of funding to just sustain our program. Um, we have a lot of different programs going out of Rowdy's Corner, um, including some social enterprise um, programming. So we have like Coffee Club and also a Pay What You Can market to sustain our funds there. Um, this is available for all of the area community or anyone around Rowdy's Corner to help sustain our funds. Um, currently, we spend between fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month um, on feeding MSU Denver students. MSU Denver students do not have to qualify to use our services. It is part of our values um, that it is destigmatized. So this means that you don't have to um, qualify at all to go into Rowdy's Corner. Um, Tarek, do you want to take it away? Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of what we do all three students a lot of different misperceptions, but like it's part of the solution. Not all student ran. No help from um, university uh, other now. Uh, yeah, just seeing that they increase since we most of the new space and new semester you know, overwhelming for us. Uh, trying to meet the needs of everyone is pretty difficult right now. Um, so yeah, that's where we're for more financial help so that we can serve all the students that need our help. Yeah, um, building off that ever since the beginning of the fall semester, we now anticipate just enough students coming in. Um, after each week, we've seen an increase and increase in amount of transactions going in. Um, past week, it was a uh, very sad for me because uh, as we were told, uh, we are in funding. Um, our shelves were like completely empty. Someone even came in and thought that you guys are closing down around these corners, uh, seeing how empty it was. So this just goes to show how many students are going in and just uh, like this, like transactions are getting currently. Uh, yeah, and off of what Alejandro was saying too, um, we do have a lot of local partnerships. So 60% of our funds that we spend every month do go to local partnerships in Colorado. And this is an effort to just localize our food system and making sure that our own economy is running. And um, yes, we are taking initiatives. We had the farmers market over the summer. We raised $2,000 um, over, I believe, Let's see, it was six weeks and we were only out there for two hours a week. Um, so we are having ways to fund Rowdy's Corner, but we are in the need of help right now for sure. Are there any questions so far about Rowdy's Corner? I do have a question. I know our fellow members have uh, a resolution. <laughs> Without resolution, how much do you think writers could be? Yeah, um, currently, our budget is 160000 a semester. Okay. That's our entire budget. Um, yes, yeah, so it'd be helpful to fund upwards of 20000 if not more. Yes. Oh. I mean, sorry. A question that I, that I have is mm -hmm. Has Ryan's Corner or the Gal? Or I don't know who we're happy to with this summer. Is there a reason you all have not gone through the SAD, the Student Affairs Board process, to get money from like Student Affairs? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. No, no. You have a question. No, no. no. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm not sure if we have found there or not. I think we just the Rowdy's are doing good at the time, which is very uh, decent. Um, but it's already in the semester is doing fully that tactic, and I know you didn't start it from that start yet. Um, so it will be representing us. Um, so we're hoping that we can get the education out there to make them know how Rowdy's doing currently. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. We were predicted only a 20% um, increase, and we've seen 66% so far. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have Will on the stack, then I have Matt. Then I have Mike, then I have Paul. Will. You're on mute. You're inaudible. You're muted. Sorry. I was going to say it's a little hard to hear from 
the computer and whatnot. I'm, I'm, you might have touched up on it, but you say you're not sure how much you have left, right, for the semester. No, we know how much we have left for the semester. We do have it tracked. I just, I don't think I have the data point right now. Okay. We can come back to you. That's okay. Yeah, no worries. Um, okay, I have Matt. Yeah, I was curious on um, like how much of your funding comes from like a uh, food bank or like uh, insecurity like grants. <laughs> so our food bank of the Rockies order is completely <clears throat> funded already. Um, and we have $30,000 from the FPA grant. All right, because I was in a meeting with uh, the Colorado Department of Higher Education later, and they gave me some information on the Colorado Blueprint and Hunger, mm -hmm. which has a lot of funding opportunities as well. I believe that's the same as the FPA grant. I could be wrong. Well, it looks like there's a couple of different grants on the site. Okay. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Sure. So <clears throat> I'm not sure if y'all consider this, but this is actually I think this is actually very feasible and that's something we could actually advocate for as well. Um, but so there's a student fee that kind of funds us and it funds all activities on campus. And uh, a few years ago, there's a student fee that established the uh, very, uh, sustainability center. Mm -hmm. So all three institutions give a student fee towards that. Have you all considered options of proposing for the student body about a referendum on like a student fee? For instance, that would fund y'all's that because that that is a more um, that sounds like more of a solution than fundraising all the time. Mm -hmm. So, like for instance, we give you money that's just a band-aid fix. Have you guys considered long-term options like that? For instance, we have yeah. Um, if every student pays seven dollars in their student fees, it would raise one hundred thousand dollars for the academic school year, which is majority of our budget. So, but, have y'all considered like moving towards that option? I have. Yeah. That would go against our goal providing free food for all the MSU students. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. 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 Because this resolution would come out of student fees. So, mm -hmm. so we yeah, like, we but, yeah. So, are we doing the stack still? Yes. Okay. I'm just giving a direct response. Okay. But it would be lovely to discuss further how Correct. we manage that. Okay, Paul. Okay. Um, I, uh, uh, I'm really glad you're all here. I wanted to say, um, you know, we did have an effort last year to, uh, similar to what we see in the resolution today. For those of you that were present last year, can you speak to the impact that the student government contribution had and maybe the matching contribution that came from the administrators and stuff kind of individually and department wise? Like, um, like, yeah, can you speak to what impact it made? Was it like, you know, because I'm, I'm, I, the reason we were doing it again this year is because I did see a huge change in how Rodney's Corner operates. I just don't know how much of that was us, how much of it was like other forces at play. Can can anybody speak to that? I mean, yeah. From what I've seen, a lot of it is mainly outside sources, hmm. um, whether it's donations, police, or whatnot. Um, yeah, it would be nice to see more like in house support because it's kind of like we're supporting these students yeah. in uh, MSU. So it just makes sense to have the support from MSU instead of. It's nice to have outside people, but also just even to be more Yeah. Um, yeah, because we're actually at a bigger location now, people are starting to see us more. The word of mouth's getting wider, so more people are coming in. We got how much was it this week? I think 1,400 transactions. Yeah, just, just the expansion. We need more help, not just from outside. Yeah. And, and from what I understand, like the current budget is totally operated on like just grants and donations like we're running on on themes when it comes to institutional play okay cool yes and um just to add some more background i guess to that our uh, our budget is also allocated for our employees some of us are work study but all of our new employments uh employees that we just hired are 
they did not qualify work for work study. So their money is coming out of the budget. Um, and this, again, goes against that like sustainability aspect of our budget is not just going towards the programming or like the food access pieces or the community engagement. We're also having to um, pay our employees. Um, and this limits us greatly because we are working within work study and um, all of everyone who we just hired can't work over 10 hours a week. Um, at my role too, I'm limited to 15 hours a week. And this would just help us um, sustain a more uh, full-time employee closer to 30 hours, 20 to 30 hours. So that um, it just keeps everything operating and going and that our team gets the support that they deserve and that they need since we are seeing so many people. If you, can I? Yes, go ahead, can please. I go? please do. Um, so given that we've said that you don't want students to pay for this, mm -hmm. If this money comes from the student piece, I can see that as a conflict with your goal. So what I I we're still gonna go through the motion call. Um we have an advisor outside of the uh, outside of TSAC mm -hmm. and he's done a lot of work with Kroger. They rebuilt his pantry, they've donated a lot of things for them. Mm -hmm. We would love to make this possible for Roddy's Corner as well, if you guys are willing to work with us as well, if you guys are willing to put that input as well. Um, I think I, I would love to support this and I, I would love for perhaps, and I cannot promise this, but perhaps that the money from student council perhaps help, helps to pay for your employees. Like that is something else that can be talked about. Mm -hmm. um, Again, I can't promise that it would mean a collaborative work and a whole reform of this mm -hmm. uh, on how TSA can support you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you guys and we all have time, we would love to, like I would love to meet with you and talk about this and to see how we can get you more support, not only from inside the school, but outside as well. Mm -hmm. And it would be just what I was talking about. Um, that's all I have to say. Do you still want to go? And yes. then I have what I have read re Sure, go ahead. Oh, you can go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah, go ahead. I um, appreciate it. So, um, yes, I think in a, 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 a we all we all support British Corner. We uh, we were um, uh, to quote uh, Miguel, we were instrumental in the, the move, and um, we we love supporting. And I, what I want to see furthermore as well, and I love to help with, is um, right now the model of which you guys get money is not sustainable. Like donations based, I. I it's not sustainable for the long run. And I think you guys have this problem every year where it's like, how are we gonna get the, it's 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 stressful, it can be stressful. And I think honestly, if we can, um, cause I mean, I have thought of this last year, I don't know why we didn't go through with it, but I think if the student body votes on a referendum that says, hey, let's fund the food pantry, let's help some of our students on campus, this means something we can go towards, um, I would, I as a student wouldn't mind paying $7 out of my, tuition as a fee for that purpose and i get that goes against y'all's mission but i think generally it's it's it leads us to leads y'all at least to a more sustainable option and it gives you guys better control of your numbers because if you know how many people are enrolled each semester you guys can basically predict y'all's budgets so um this is something i would like to kind of maybe get some more feedback from the student body of course but i think that's a very easy feasible or not easy but i think it's a very feasible solution and path forward for y'all, because y'all are seeing an uptick in students, which is glad that's what we want. Mm -hmm. But um, I want to ensure the viability going forward um, as well. So um, I send the offer as well with Denny. I'd love to meet with y'all as well mm -hmm. um, to kind of further discuss how we can furthermore um, advocate on y'all's behalf, because I love to be in those conversations. I I mean, I've worked at a Walmart too and worked kind of in the area as well. So I think I have some some contacts we could get in contact with. But, I just wanted to say that after our training session in August, I had offered to write a letter. So I reached out to Miguel first because I wanted to, you know, get his in input on that before I just did that. And he thanked me for reaching out. And he said, please hold off on reaching out to any external food vendors. I was going to talk to try to talk to Skiing Supers, Kroger as the family, you know. Um, executive board of that. We need to ensure we're working closely with our corporate and foundation relations colleagues. We're in the process of a corporate sponsorship strategy and they'd love our support. So they're mindful of that. And I think reaching out to Miguel is a good move for you. I'd say yes. And I'd also like to suggest, I'm long in what Mike is saying, that, um, you know, really thinking about 
and this is just a general statement, if you'll forgive me, um, the, the method of, of trying to get ongoing support, you know, that small amount for the student body included in the fees, mm -hmm. the students that need the most help, they get the financial support and don't pay the fees anyway. So the ones who would be, in, you know, behooved to pay that are ones who are paying fees on, t you know, top of any aid they would get. So I think it would be in the wash, but it would be so helpful, Correct. you know, for you too, if you could just tweak that idea and think about it differently. But that's just my two cents, of course. But yeah, I think the great thing is to reach out to Miguel and they're working on that strategy. And I would love to work with Joe as well and gather more information. And I would love to, and me and all our representatives with the CDHE, um, the College Department of Higher Education, and one of the initiatives that they're working on is uh, food insecurity. And I would love to try and present at that level to see what support we can get, even as high as like the state level. Absolutely. Yeah. One in three Coloradans report being food insecure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just think this is an important initiative. And the community app, like, effect that we're having and the impact that we're having, you know, a lot of people are looking at us right now. And um, yeah, I would love to do that in that yeah. partnership. That would, yeah, that would be amazing. We, would, uh, we do have a partnership with the State Department of Education, mm -hmm. and we could bring you into that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Um, I, uh, I like a lot of the communication that's going on right now, but uh, I should also recognize they're asking for financial support right now. Um, we are uh, we are talking about like helping them find other av avenues of resources, but uh, as far as I understand, this is a resource that they are uh, they are looking for. Uh, rather drastically right now to prepare. So I would like to like talk a little bit about the, uh, the resolution that I bring to the board a little bit so that we can discuss it. Um, Is there anything else you would like you would like to talk about before I pass the floor to? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I just follow up. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, and we would like to ask if they help. Um, but to follow back with. Some of the is not working, and some are struggling to get with things to slow the financial aid. Um, we know that it's hard for us to even find a grant and apply for them to get to the computer, not even to do us on to get enough hours to even work those hours to get that applied. Um, yeah, and we're always expanding, so there's always new things going on. So that's something that like, we told you to so you don't have enough time to follow. Oh, um, hold on. Is it observed? The response to that before he goes to the check. It is a time check. Okay. I'm going to get on the floor. Beautiful. Um, and yeah. Go ahead. Awesome. Awesome. I will keep this brief. I will uh, state out loud the abstract and the therefore as the uh, actionable items on this. We are in Go ahead. Okay, beautiful. We, the Student Advocacy Council, recognize the rising cost of food and other necessities which can affect every aspect of life. We remember the work of our predecessor, SGA leader Kyle Haley, in the fall of 2007, passed a resolution that started the MSU Denver Food Bank, which was renamed to the Roadrunner Food Pantry in the summer of 2018, which recently was renamed to Riley's Corner. This was due to an increased number of students on campus facing poverty and hunger. The food pantry has noticed an increase in food insecurity among students that has been increasing since 2019 with changing climate, political dilemmas, sheer stagflation. Uh, many students need supplemental help to feed themselves. Uh, the food pantry on MSU Denver campus has had an increase in the volume of students arriving for this services provided by the food pantry and attempting to meet these demands while also providing food that corresponds to dietary restrictions while also providing a warm and comfortable environment that is safe for all students uh, and encourages people to use services when there is complex emotion around seeking this assistance. 
Therefore, it hereby be resolved, the Student Advocacy Council will make an initial transfer of $10,000 from the uncategorized section from our budget, I pass out the budget section, uh, to the Roadrunner Food Pantry as a first step of reaffirming our Student Advocacy Council's commitment to combating food insecurity on this campus. Uh, further, uh, SGTSAC will allocate another $5,000 to be donated on the date of October 16th in recognition of World Food Day and our commitment to addressing the problems uh, food insecurity posed on our university. It is further resolved that between the time of those two donations, SGTSAC will demand the university to recognize the issue at hand and request they match our donations while seeking other organizations that are willing to donate any amount that they can, thus increasing the total monetary assistance given. Um, the student government of MSU will promote SNAP benefits and the Roadrunner Food Rowdy's Corner, Food Pantry, and other resources will go to the Denver metro area, including Metro Caring, Denver Food Pantry, or donation-based restaurants. Um, the two final ones, the council seeks to work with Rowdy's Corner, Corner to provide options to deliver food to those students who are unable to make it to campus due to health reasons. Um, and it is further resolved that the satellite locations of Rowdy's Corner will remain a focus of the MSU's Denver Student Government in Rowdy's Corner. I don't know what that last thing means, but oh, yeah. uh, there's, there's little satellite spots across the, in the veterans office. There's one another spots. They're just other access points for food. We have two minutes until the next the next speaker comes in. Um, will you be willing to table the discussion for next week? I think we've discussed a lot about this. And I'd be willing to call to the vote if other people are willing to vote on it. I have questions and some concerns over here too. I'd like to well, debate. He's, so. he, he's willing okay. to make a motion, so okay. I'm going to respect sure. his motion. Sure. Yeah, I motion to call to question this resolution. You know, we've had some discussion about the topic. Okay, so you're you're motioning for a vote. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's actually going to be a, well, not to just be parliamentary, there's going to be a two thirds agreement to close discussion. And so, if a significant majority is like, well, no, let's not close it, you have the capacity to do that and continue discussing it. Just to kind of throw that out. Okay. Well, then we are motioning to vote for the resolution to grant our exporter $15,000 in total. Is okay. that why you're motioning? So, so, I would just say motion to call the question has been seconded. Is anyone opposed? Okay. I'm anyone? opposed because I think we need to discuss this. Later. Okay. Anyone, Anyone else? who opposes this, just say nay, please. Anyone opposes to call to question the motion? Oh, I, I oppose. We, we can't close it right now. That's what we're trying to say. One, two, three. So let's count. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, Whoa. seven. Okay. And what's our total, Sure. Twelve. Twelve. Seven out of twelve. Since the majority. It's so the motion the motion does pass. Discussion continues. Motion. Just you have people working today. Yeah, so you said four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. So there's eleven. And so and so well yeah, still doesn't pass. So the motion would fail and discussion would continue. Do you want to keep going this with this discussion? Oh no, I wanted to close it up. But y'all have prevailed in the in the question of whether or not we close discussion. So discussion continues. I like the motion. Go ahead. I motion. Um, we set a meeting with the representatives of Rowdy's Corner and table us until we've met we've met with them and uh, improve and uh, work with them a little more. So I motion that we table us until we meet with Rowdy's Corner. I second, second. that. Second. And everybody who agrees says aye. Aye. Uh, any anyone opposes? this? Aye. Aye. We got empty shelves, people, and people's jobs are at risk. So I think this is an important thing for us to take up now. Any abstentions? I abstain. Okay. okay. Um, please stay. Thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome to stay if you're willing to. Um, I don't know. I don't have any of your guys' information. If I could get that at the end mm -hmm. of the day, so that, that would be lovely. Yes. Did you say Sarah? Is that right? Did I make that up? Yeah, I'm Angelica. Angelica. That's my great grandma's. I love it. Angelica's so pretty too. Okay.
Then we can yeah. make it all this out. Yes, please. We'll we'll yeah. This week, I would post it. Okay. Okay, great. I'm just A. Marley at MSU Denver. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I have it. Uh, Appreciate the understanding, folks. Sure. So, we'll see you guys next week. Yep. We'll be up in the mouth. I'm sorry? Okay, we're just going to wait for farm to happen. Okay. Wait for people to exit the room so we can continue with this. Any so they four episode. Even with the living room. Seven. Yeah. You still have no. Yeah. Is John yeah. John still on? Yeah. Okay. Emily, thank you for your patience. Um, no problem. Okay, let's move forward. Emily, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. All right, I'm sharing my screen with you all. I was going to say good morning, but we don't need to re -tie, rewind time, so good afternoon. Um, thank you all for having us today to talk about the Student Affairs Board. I am here joined with the Student Affairs Budget Advisor, Sam Barnett, who's also on the screen with me. He is also still fairly new to SAP, so he's really going to be here to listen, but can also ask I answer general budget questions about the process. So um, I'm going to go through a, a quick presentation for you all. Um, if you have questions, I can't see everyone in the room, so feel free to just interrupt as needed during the presentation. Um, that's not a problem. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm here to talk to you about the Student Affairs Board, SAB as we call it, um, which is part of y'all's bylaws that uh, folks from your um, committee serve on SAB. And then we it's also comprised of other students across campus, which we'll get into further. Uh, so SAB is comprised of an administrative advisor, which is myself. Um, I'm sorry, I should introduce myself. My name is Emily Willen. I'm the chief of staff to the vice president for student affairs, uh, Dr. Will Simpkins, who I think is coming actually right after me. So I work in the office with him. Um, one budget advisor, who is Sam, a faculty member who comes from faculty senate, and that person changes every year. So we don't know who the member is yet this year. Um, obviously, we have two members from the Student Advocacy Council. So um, in the past, it's been a chair and a co and a vice chair um, because you all have one vote, because you all are funded by SAB funds. One person is meant to run the program. The other one is meant to be re a student representative. Um, last year, Taylor uh, decided to um, share their vote. Taylor and James, and so that's definitely something you all can think about doing coming forward, um, but it is just one vote, even though there are two members. And then we're comprised of two to six other general um, members of the student body. We would love to have a graduate student included as well, um, but to be that representation and the voice for uh, students across campus. Uh, so what does SAB do? We allocate, we make recommendations on the allocation for nearly $3 million in revenue from the student affairs fee. Um, so I often tell students when we're talking about how we're going to fund programs, imagine taking $5 out of your pocket and saying, this is how I want that $5 to be spent, because these are the program fees that you all are paying. And so it's important that we have your voice and how these um, programs are funded. So last year we had 13 programs, which I think in the next slide we'll show you all of those so you can see what programs are funded by the SAB. Um, the fee supports professional staff, specialty programs, student programming that all directly benefit MSU Denver students and our shared campus institutions, so CU Denver, CCD, and the community writ large. Um, I won't go through the, the bottom portion, but those were just our goals last year for the SAB set. Part of um, y'all's leadership on SAB will be leading the board through what our goals will be for this coming year. So the goals are what we use to lead us when we decide to allocate the funds. So here are the 13 programs that the student affairs fee, student affairs fee funds. 
um, you can see in that middle column, FY 23, 24 requested increase, and then their total need. This is not what they were allocated last year, but this is just so you can see, um, just comparing FY 22 to their total need in the far column, how much more funding our programs need and how they've really been impacted by our declining enrollment. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so you can see we have area, area Learning Center, Classroom to Career Hub, Center for Visual Art, LGBTQ Student Resource Center, Music Activities, CMEI, Student Engagement Wellness, um, ULR TSAC, Met Media, Campus Event Funding, Student Travel Theater, and Gender Institute for Teaching and Advocacy. So what is SAB's role in the process? Uh, you all will determine priorities and set goals, which guide recommendations on how we allocate the funds. Um, the, in case on the previous slide, you're like, what are half of those programs? I've never even heard of them before. Once SAB sets their goals, then we send out the information to all of the fee funded programs. And those directors will come in and do a 20 minute presentation for the board and then have 10 minutes for Q&A. And it's a time for them to really educate the board about what they do, their student impact, how many students they serve, what is the demographic makeup of the students that they serve? Is it actually serving the MSU Denver student population or are we actually missing the mark somewhere? How they spend their funds. Um, sorry, I have a bright light of sun coming in my window. Um, how they spend their funds. Um, and just any other questions that you have about their funding. Um, once all the presentations are complete, then we have what's called deliberations, where we lock ourselves in a room for four to five hours, we have some food, and we get down and dirty with how we're gonna allocate this budget that we have. Um, Sam's role in the budget office is really to say, here is the lump sum we anticipate getting. This is how we can allocate it out. This is how we're being fair, but still prioritizing different programs. So we come up with three budget scenarios based on our enrollment. As you all know, we usually are pretty good about projecting what our fall enrollment will be, but that can go up or down by a few percentages points. So it might be that one option is 1% down, one option might be flat, and then the third option might be 1% up. So we can come up with those three different variations. So that when we hit census date, we know how much money we're actually gonna have to give out. So you all do not need to read this. I know this is a lot of print, but when I said that we have the programs come in and do presentations, part of the board's work that we do in the fall is coming up with all the different questions. So what are you curious about in these programs? What do you as a student want to know? And so these are just a list of some of the things that we have asked in the past. Again, give us a breakdown of who uses your programs, everything from students to faculty members and community members, how many MSU Denver students compared to CCD and UCD, online, undergrad, et cetera. Um, obviously, uh, diversity and inclusion is important to us, so we specifically to ask questions around how you remove barriers to ensure our students can access your programs. We know that we have a lot of students who still do online programs and so or online learning. So how is it important to the board this year? How are our programs engaging our, our virtual students, right? Um, in the past, we have to qu ask questions about how COVID-19 impacted their programs that may or may not stay on the questions this year, but something for the board to think about. And then the last portion of what we ask our uh, program directors to do is give us a budget breakdown. Um, and anyone who's been on TSAC and has worked in the budget last year would be familiar with this because you all provided this to us last year during your presentation. Um, so who's, who's getting what funding? What portion of your funding is going directly to students? Um, what portion of that is going to staff? Um, how are you using it in your daily operations, your programming, et cetera? This is just a, a general timeline of what this year would look like. So we really take the fall um, to recruit our additional students. And then we have two or three meetings where we're just doing trainings and asking about what are those goals um, and what are the questions that we want to know. And then we take a break for the, the winter break. We give all that information to our program directors. They start building their presentations and their budgets. And then when we come back in the spring, um, we start doing our presentation. So we'll set up two hour blocks typically, and we just have people line up half hour after half hour to come and do presentations. And that lasts roughly four weeks. 
and then we have our deliberations and then it's done. So it's actually not a huge time commitment. Um, it's a little bit heavier on the TSAC side because we'll have meetings before our committee meetings, our board meetings to make sure we're all on the same page. And I really do, Sam and I are here to be supports and truly advisors for this board, but we do really enforce setting up the TSAC leaders as the leaders of the board. So you all will be running the meetings. You all will be doing these types of presentations for students who might be interested in joining us. Um, but it's really on you all to lead those meetings and we're just here to support and answer questions and make sure you're not left hanging anywhere. That is it for my presentation. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a question. Go ahead, William. Okay. Um, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being here today and presenting. Um, I'd love to learn more about the times for the meetings because it's something that I am looking to participate in. Yeah, so, so I'd just like to understand better what the meeting times are for those dates. Yeah, so when the TSAC uh, chair and vice chair are identified, then uh, Sam and myself will meet with those two folks and we'll essentially just look at your schedules and see when there's blocks of times. Friday, as I'm sure you all are aware, because that's when you meet, are typically the best times for meetings. A lot of times we would meet for like a half hour right before the TSAC meetings. Um, in the fall, we've made all of our meetings virtual, uh, just as a board in general, um, because there's no need for everyone to be together and illness runs a little more in the fall. And then in the spring, the presentations are in person. But yeah, so it really depends on what your schedule looks like. And then when we get the board together, then we do the same thing. We say, when is everyone free at the same time? And that's kind of what dictates when the meetings are. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. I have I have someone over here with the question, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Emily. Um, Hi. So I know you're um, gonna be wanting to ask for representatives. We haven't sent you representatives yet, have we? Have we? No. Nope, that's what I'm here to do today is to kind of give Perfect. you all a download of what it is and then Beg and plead for two wonderful people who <laughs> want to join us. <laughs> Lovely. Um, so when is your hard date that you want to get started and when you'll need two representatives from? Because from what yeah. I've gathered, I'm not, I've not been in part of SA people, but like in the past, I thought it was more of a spring thing. Yes. Yeah, so, so October, the month of October is when we start recruiting for our other two to six board members. Um, and then we start board meetings usually like that first week of November, and it's usually two or three meetings in November, and that's pretty much it for the board for the fall. So we we decide our goals, we decide our questions, which doesn't take a lot of time, and we send that to the program directors, and then they kind of work over winter break, and then you're right, in the spring is definitely when it's the heaviest when we come back. Okay, cool. So what it sounds like is October is um the time period you'd want um just because I, I think we, what we might want to do is do the shuffling around of priorities and like assignments maybe because i think there could be some because the people that i think want to do it have a lot on their plate right now so i think we give us like that grace period to make get you some firm representatives because i know this is important i know um it'd be worth it to get you to get you some good people so yeah that would be great all right cool I'm interested this year too. I also second what Will just put in the chat. Um, if we can get a copy of that PowerPoint. Oh yeah, we'll do. Made this okay. online. Oh, this is great. You guys are all very interested this we year. We are this year. Interested. There's a lot they're, of us. They're, fight, yeah. they're fighting for it this year. Last year it was like crickets. Well, because <laughs> you've done this online for fall, you know, and then you've done the spring thing on Friday. So, <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, we're going to have to have a meeting about this and we'll get, we'll get back to you soon. Sounds great. If if we could get, I will drop the PowerPoint in. I'm running to an interview for the budget director right now, but I will drop the PowerPoint in as soon as I'm done asking my questions into the chat. Um, and then if we could get two names within two weeks, that would be ideal to make sure we have some brainstorming time on how we want to recruit students for the board, what we're going to pay them, et cetera. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for you. coming.
Thank you. Bye, y'all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Nope. Mm -hmm. Lisa, because coming in person, I believe. Oh, is he coming in person? No. That's what he mentioned. Does he know where he's at? Does he know where we're at? I was notified. You were, I was notified you were coming online. Oh, okay. Well, then. And I'll just let you know um, to vote to table my resolution to another week. What resolution? But we can't vote the table, your table oh, resolution. <laughs> when I wasn't trying to get it voted on, I was trying to just get it read, but I put in the chat if people would just read it. Well, choose. it's your resolution, so you can withdraw it. Choose. Yeah, I'll table it for okay. in the interest of time. Well, I don't know what's. Is it a long? Yeah, I think we just take like a five-minute break. It's just tabling the. Yeah. What's up, Will? Yes, Will? Okay. Hey, Matt. Yeah? <laughs> if Will Simpkins doesn't come by, would you be more comfortable not tabling it? Well, Simpkins is going to come. He is. is yeah, I was tabling in the interest of time. Okay, Tweed just said that he's on the elevator right now. Uh, oh, so he's coming. Very so well. Yes. Sorry. I think we take like a two minute process. Yeah. Let's reset. Come back and when Dr. Simpkins gets so well. No, we won't. No, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> he walks in. <laughs> <laughs> also, I can't see you guys. Welcome. We're going to do norms next week, so we'll just put it on the agenda to discuss, like the week prior. We will discuss. Sorry, yes. See, I told you to be in person. We need to vote. We can't just pick people. Oh, yeah. We'll oh, yeah. Do a quick little discussion. Right. We're going to do that to follow Love it. She wants in two weeks. So. Yeah. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll work on it. Let's give it next week when we try and vote the following week. Okay. Recess is over. Let's readjourn. Did you mean miss? Where's Kenny? Where's our we need our assistant? Oh, wait. Sorry. I think he's in the rest. He's in the rest. Nice to see you. Okay. I'll recess too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting outside having lunch. There's our assistant. There he is. There's our assistant. <laughs> Mike. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. Will, can you hear okay? I can hear you guys, but I can't see you. Well, you still can't see you. Hey, Will. I'd like to see uh, Will Simpkins. Beautiful face. All right. This is, the, Dr. this is the alien thing that our mother says. I'm sure he prefers that. Uh, what did I get called? Will Simpkins. He calls no. you Will Simpkins. No, if he can call me that if I can call him other Will. <laughs> Is that okay? That's perfectly fine. Okay, I guess in this room, though, I'm the other Will. <laughs> You're Will Prime. <laughs> I love that. Three and Three and Sorry. Okay. Let's Back to recess. <laughs> It's Friday, Armando. It, it is Friday. It's after two o'clock. Yeah. That's been a long day. It's Do what Elsa day. said and let it go. <laughs> <laughs> if I did that, you would not like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's an HR issue. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Bill. Um, this is an informal check in. Uh, if anybody has any questions, do you have an opening statement? And yeah. So yeah, let me let me do like two or three minutes just yeah. on stuff that's sort of happening, stuff we're talking about, thinking about, working on. Um, first, I want to thank Will for being your official rep on the Student Success Launch team. If you listened to the Board of Trustees meeting this morning, um, and if you did, and your name doesn't rhyme with Mike Warner, <laughs> um, bless you, because that's a long meeting. Um, but we have set, uh, there are four primary metrics that we're going to use over the next seven years to measure the university success. Now, there's a lot of other metrics, but these are the four that we feel most passionately about. Recruitment, retention, completion, and postgraduate success, all for students. So are we recruiting the right number of new first-year transfer graduate students every year? 
are we retaining you? So preventing you from stopping out, dropping out, taking fewer credits when you shouldn't, right? Or, or when there are ways that we can prevent you from, from taking that step back. Are we getting you across the finish line in the time that we've promised you that we can get you across the finish line? And then how are we setting you up for success after you get that credential? Job, graduate school, you know, you name it. We've also set some metrics of where we want to be in 2030. So a couple of examples. Right now, our year, our fall to fall retention rate. So what percentage of students that were enrolled in fall 22 are enrolled in fall 23? And take out those that have graduated, right? We don't count them. We're at 67.4. So that means we've lost about a third of our students from fall to fall, which is, is typical. It's actually down 1% from last year. We were at 68. We want to get by 2030 to 80%, which actually would be um, quite impressive because that's higher than the national average. But um, we we feel like we can do it if we work together. Our graduation rates, so this is only of students who start as freshmen and come in as um, full-time students. So if you started in a fall semester, you've never been to college before, and you took at least 12 credits, we count you. Um, we're currently getting about 12% of those first-time full-time freshmen across the finish line in four years. We want to get to 36%, which is again above the national average um, and a little bit more. So student success launch that Will sits on um, is the body that will determine how, like what are the strategies that we're gonna use to start meeting some of those outcomes. A lot of feedback from you will be really useful. What are the roadblocks? What are the most common reasons that students stop out, drop out, or take fewer credits? What are the reasons that you're not graduating when you think you should graduate? And we will try to fix those challenges. So that's one big bucket of energy. Also wanna give you an update on community hour. Um, it's bubbling right now, and I'm not sure why it's bubbling, but it is, and that's okay. Um, so we, uh, senior staff early summer voted to initiate it for spring 2024. There is a construction project that we call project B that will take Central and West offline completely after spring break 2024, meaning all those classrooms, all those academic departments have to be relocated so that those buildings can be, um, there, there's some sort of repair that has to be done, yeah. Um, so given that, we felt like that that's a lot of chaos to put in the system at one time. So we postponed community hour to fall 2024. Um, the next steps are, we're hoping that the Community College of Denver will sign on with us. And so we're, we're in a bit of a holding pattern waiting for them to catch up. If they do, we just need to confirm what the actual daily schedule looks like. So when will community hour happen at what time of day? Um, but we're committed to three things. One, that it's every day. So Monday through Friday, because we don't want some students to have it and some students not to have it that it is sometime around the lunch lunch hour because we want people to have time to eat. And also, we've talked about this before, the more people who eat on campus, the better food we get on campus because the sales go up. We can get better vendors, different vendors, more vendors. And then the third is, right now it's scheduled to be an hour from 12.15 to 1.15. We'd like to see if we can find a little bit more time so that students can get from a class to something at community hour and then to their next class a little more comfortably. But but that's an open question. We're not sure about that one yet. So let's say uh, CCD signs on, we agree on the time schedule. The next step is an implementation team for fall 2024. And so that will be the team that does um, five key tasks. Resources for chairs and departments to, to do their schedules, their class schedules resources for service units to make to plan for like we don't want financial aid to have a massive line during community hour right how can we prevent that same with advising third is resources around events and programming so what are the reasons why it's hard to do an event on this campus and it's way hard to do an event on this campus right um clear up a lot of that fourth is we want to communicate and market whatever happens during community hour, so people actually know why it's there and what to use it for. And then fifth, we need to measure 
how people are using it. So what impact is it actually having? We want it to increase student engagement and thus student retention. Um, and there are some leading indicators that we can look for on the front side and then those will be our lagging indicators. So um, next step after CCD is putting that implementation team together. Um, we will come to TSAC and ask for a representative to sit on that. So you might want to be thinking about who that is. Um, uh, all the shared governance uh, groups would have a seat as well as some folks from academic affairs, student affairs and facilities. Um, so those are the, the two big things that are taking up a lot of my time. And then um, the third thing is hiring a provost. So uh, getting a chief academic officer for the university, uh, provost supervises all the deans, all the associate vice presidents of undergraduate studies, graduate studies, curriculum, faculty affairs, online learning, small all, job. all the stuff, yeah, 16 <laughs> direct reports. Um, but that is a really key position for, um, you know, running the university, making sure that somebody's minding the curriculum and supervising the advisors. Most of them report there. So that's the third thing on my agenda. But I'm happy to talk about anything you want to talk about. Well, in relation to some of the stuff you were just talking about, um, we created a survey we've been sharing at our last couple of events. Mm -hmm. And actually, this question right here, I think, is really relevant to what you're talking about. We ask, what are the top five issues affecting student success on campus? Mm -hmm. um, so this is out of, I only have 56 or 55 responses. Um, but these are the top issues. Number one being mental health. Number two being parking and transportation. Mm -hmm. And I think third is food insecurity. Talk to me a little bit about parking. So I, I <laughs> Let me quickly talk about the other two and then I'll ask yeah, you yeah. about parking. So mental health, we're very aware of like the national trend, which doesn't make it any less important. But I think most schools are responding wrongly to it. We, we will not solve a mental health crisis by hiring more counselors. Also, it's nearly impossible to hire counselors right now. Um, we have to think about what are the what are the things in this experience that drive up stress rates and anxiety and how can we try to train faculty um, to be mental health first responders, use trauma-informed practices across the institution. So it's more of a, a culture building activity. Um, we're getting ready to do some really awesome stuff in the well-being area. I would say give him two weeks and then invite Dean Taylor Tackett to come talk to you about some things he's working on. Um, on the food insecurity issue, uh, again, massive problem everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I feel really good about what we've done so far. We've got a lot more work to do in that space. But for food and housing insecurity, you know, the root of that is finances. Mm -hmm. like, I can't afford to live here. I can't afford to buy a healthy meal. And so I'm making decisions that don't make me happy or I'm, mm -hmm. I'm feeling like I've got a lot of anxiety. So one of the strategies that Student Affairs is going to really um, dig into next academic year is um, efforts to better connect students to livable wage jobs while you're a student. So instead of expecting you to make it on like two part-time jobs that are cobbled together, we want to actually cultivate jobs where we know that the employer is flexible, that they offer benefits, that it's, you know, we're going to be making like $42,000 a year, $45,000 a year, something like that. But talk to me about transportation and parking. I have a hunch that that's both like RTD sucks and we have safety concerns. Yeah. And why do I have to pay for parking for a school that I'm paying tuition at? It's especially the amount of yeah. what we have to pay because it's also interesting that even AHEC staff don't get any discounts even. <laughs> There's no discounts anywhere. And I just wanted to bring up on the food insecurity, we all just had a presentation from uh, Rowdy's, Rowdy's Corner. Okay. Um, needing more money because um, yeah. their numbers are up and yeah. their budget shrinking. Their budget's not right. shrinking. No, not shrinking, but yeah. the capacity right. Right. is shrinking. Yeah. Their um, the resources that they currently have are not able to meet this. Um, that's out there. And yeah. they also had concerns. Sorry, Mike. No, you did. Um, because they also had concerns around. They're having more of their staff had to be paid out of that budget instead of through work study. That is a that is a concern for everybody yeah. at the university, including myself. Right. Um, I just want to, you know, 
we actually got less money from the federal government and the state government this year for work study because our enrollment declined. So they use typically a three-year average. So this would be the first year that COVID-1, COVID-2, and, and COVID-3, basically, uh, enrollment years hit our numbers. And so there's less work study. Um, this is also like, when you think about the funding of the university, which, which we talked about this before, because we are so underfunded, we do not have the staff, full-time staff mm -hmm. to do the jobs that have to get done. We're at mm -hmm. 25 students to every one staff. I think Boulder is at six to one. Um, right. It's bad. So we deploy you in work study positions or hourly positions mm -hmm. to do things that that should be done by full-time people. And um, it's a bad situation that we're gonna have to figure ourselves out of. I also don't want students who need workable wage jobs to be like depending on work study to do that, right? Those are not designed to be workable wage jobs. Those are designed to be a few hours a week, right? Um, so the, you're, you're not wrong and the students are not wrong, right? I think there's a, um, on the parking issue in particular, there's a deep hole that we have to dig ourselves out of, which is the AHEC budget being built around parking revenue as the primary driver of revenue. Um, as a former colleague of mine said, it is both um, like bad business, it's a bad business practice, and it is morally wrong. We don't actually want people driving individual cars to this campus in the volume that they do. So, you know, is there a solution? No, I will tell you what we try to do on the RTD station is negotiate the lowest price every mm -hmm. year. I'm glad that we finally got to an opt in um, $130, $150 a semester, which is still one of the best programs in the country. Um, in New York City, college students get zero. Um, subsidy for the subway, um, although K-12 students get a discount or a free pass. Mm. Um, and then on the parking piece, I want you to know that myself and other vice presidents at MSU Denver um, are really pushing back on AHEC around how they do the price structures and when they're doing um, rate increases. Um, we've done it also on event rate increases this year because um, the process used to do that just wasn't wasn't in keeping with our values as an <laughs> educational community. So we try to prevent terrible stuff from happening. But the bigger question is how do we recreate some systems that are just not serving the university anymore? Well, I'm gonna go and then I'll let you go. Yeah. Um, oh, that will. Yeah. Other will. will. No, I'm <laughs> Dr. I'm Dr. Will. Dr. Chris. Um, so given that we're still underfunded and we are being recruited into this part-time positions, how are we attempting to recruit more students if we mm -hmm. don't even have the staff to serve them? One, that is my first question. And then my second question is with Darby's Corner, they came in and they asked for $15,000. If you, if you were in student government, how would you handle that situation? Because it was heartbreaking yeah. to table that and be like, well, we can, we, like right now, we can't let us, let, let us discuss this further. Yeah. Uh, so how would, how would you handle that? So um, on your first question, Dr. Davison has a flywheel that she showed this morning. She showed in a couple of meetings. Um, you've got this big circle, right, of um, our funding is still mostly based on our enrollment. So every single student that comes in the university, if they're taking a full load of classes, brings about $10,000 of operating budget into it, regardless of if you're paying tuition or not, right? Like you're bringing $10,000 of state, federal, whatever funding. Um, in order to get the resources that we need to serve our students, we have to increase enrollment um, or stabilize enrollment. Uh, we're also in some deep areas, not um, automated enough. So at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, financial aid and human resources were both paper pencil operations. And some Excel spreadsheets, but no automation, right? The transcript <laughs> evaluation, if any of you started in 2020 or 2021 or before, 
and you sent a transcript in, literally a human being opened that PDF and used the digital underline feature to say like, we'll take this one. We won't take this one. I don't know what to do with this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a period, of, I think it was summer 2021. If you were a transfer student, it took um, over nine weeks to evaluate your transfer after coming in. So you were registering for classes without knowing what, what you did. We've gotten that down to one week now by building the automated systems where um, technology evaluates everything for us, right? And the humans can focus on the things that we just don't know what to do with that we've never seen before. We're applying that same logic in financial aid and human resources and other spaces. We should have done that 15 years ago. We didn't. And we've got to build it right now. So part of it is automation and enrollment. We brought in a 15% larger, 16% larger entering class this fall, which is great. First time in at least 11 years that our enrollment has actually grown by about 2% overall. Um, my sense is before the pandemic, we were at about 20,000, 21,000 students, and we were okay. We were mostly meeting the needs. Um, so I think there's a, a pillow of space where we can grow and it won't impact negatively your experience, either getting the right classes, um, meeting with an advisor, things like that. But as our enrollment grows, our revenue grows. As our revenue grows, we can invest that in things like academic advisors, financial aid advisors, new technology, bigger budgets for Rowdy's Corner. One of the problem for our fee funded programs, as you're very aware, Less students equals less fee revenue, meaning those programs get um, cut. Um, and so uh, I'm not on the Rowdy's Corner issue. I have not seen a budget request from them. And so I'm a little surprised that I haven't. If they've already been to you because I would have expected something. Um, we the the student affairs budget isn't final yet <laughs> because we it was just loaded into the workday system last week and verified so we're still sorting through it before we can make some decisions about where we move some pockets of money around um so what would be great is if you can if rowdy's corner gave you some documents if you can send that to me and then my team and i will look at it and see what we can do okay that sounds there's always this like you know, you, you create a program because you understand there's a need. Sometimes there's a phenomenon we call catastrophic success, where it turns out the need was much larger than you ever anticipated. And you have to start, you've opened the door, and now you have to open it wide open. And, move it. and so that's the phase we're in with a number of our programs. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. What else? Will. Other Will. You're mm -hmm. muted. You're muted, Will. You're muted. My bad. I'm usually there physically most of the time, so I'm still getting used to this. But uh, I think real quick comment on what you just said with uh, getting the documents from Rowdy's Corner. I think we should CC them and not just hand it off <laughs> to you because that, okay. that's my, how they, they might see it. Like we're just we don't want to deal with you and hand it off to student affairs. But uh, yeah. Um, the other thing was uh, parking. Um, I know that's a huge concern and you did touch on that a little bit. Um, but to also think that employees don't get any discounts either and they have to be here is, you know, it's a little rough for them. That's definitely one of the biggest complaints I hear from employees here at MSU. Yeah, so. I, and I don't get a discount either. I tried to negotiate a discount when I got my job and I was told, no, not a chance. <laughs> um, you know, I, I uh, last year, the year before, called around to some colleagues across the country and just bit, said, you know, basically, tell me about your parking situation. What does it cost? You know, how does it how does it work? Even when I was at college 20, 30 years ago <laughs> um, in a very rural campus that had probably space for 20,000 cars. Um, I had to pay something. It wasn't much, but I had to pay something. And there were a lot of meters. So it is typical on college campuses to pay for parking. Right. But, but mm. it's the amount mm -hmm. that's the right. question, right? Mm -hmm. My yeah. feedback to AHEC is 
why um, when you are right across the street from the Taylor Swift concert and the Ed Sheeran concert, which had more people than Taylor Swift, by the way, strange, um, and Ball strange Arena. <laughs> okay, and Ball Arena and downtown Denver and the Denver Center for Performing Arts, like why are, and, and we're still well below those parking rates, right? Why are we adding nickels and dimes to our rates and not adding dollars to the external rates? <laughs> um, I have concerns about that decision-making process. Um, there was also a lot of technology glitches this summer that just made parking, frankly, a pain in the butt because um, they were changing systems. So, um, you know, I, I want to, as we, as we move forward in conversations about parking, it is really important that we differentiate the very real concerns about what might be worse at Auraria than other typical campuses. Actually, there's three concerns. Where are we failing where other campuses are not, just in systems and process? What do we need to think about differently because of our mission? And how do we help folks have some realistic expectations that, frankly, second. there's nowhere for you to park in downtown Denver anymore? And that's living in a city, mm -hmm. right? Like, I do think that there's an interesting sociological thing happening in Denver right now, where Denver has urbanized so fast over the last 20 years that the culture hasn't caught up to the density. So you see it in the traffic, you see it in people's just daily behaviors, where a lot of folks are just not used to how many people are around them right now. Um, if I could just teach everybody in Denver how to do a good zipper merge, you know, <laughs> I'd really be happy. But it's a good example, right? Like, I grew up in the country. You don't have to know how to merge in rural Virginia, because there's only two cars on the road. When you're trying to merge 25 and 70, that's a density that most people haven't prepped for. Mm -hmm. And so I think, what are the reasonable expectations about parking or transportation? Um, sorry, I'll get off my soapbox. I'll say one more thing. The inherent racism and classism built into the RTD design mm -hmm. also bugs the shit out of me. That um, we are, a couple years ago, the RTD budget was held up because they wouldn't build the spur to Boulder. When I'm going to quote Laura Ward, who told me when she was living in Brighton, it took her two hours to get to campus one way because it was all buses. There were no, there was no light rail, and so the light rail doesn't run to the communities that need it the most. Mm -hmm. It runs to affluent, mostly affluent communities that frankly have other options and are not commuting into the city to do the types of work. Um, and so why is Commerce City, Brighton, uh, the Aurora, I live out on uh, Northeast Denver, and I don't take the light rail because it would be an hour and a half. Yeah. Whereas driving, even in traffic, is 20 minutes. I live in Aurora. Uh, and yeah. I did RTD all last year, bus and train. Yeah. It was a long ride. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was a long answer to your question, Will, but it's Friday. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, appreciate it. What is your question? Just hit it real quick. Um, was curious if you had any statements on you referenced about uh, the work study and financial aid decreasing. Mm -hmm. But from my understanding, last year we also overspent by somewhere around like 3,000. Um, that is a complicated system. We did not actually overspend. Right. It's an accounting uh, number right. because um, with the workday transition, yeah. there were some reporting errors that we could not fix. Right. And so it appears to be a massive an, an yeah. overspend, but it wasn't actually an overspend. Right. And I can go into more detail. All right. That'd be something I'm curious, but again, outside this meeting. Yeah. There, just so you know, for most students, when you start work study, there is a automatic switch. When you exhaust your work study, we switch you automatically painlessly to hourly. Mm -hmm. In the transition to workday, that switch 
yeah. it wasn't turned back on. Yeah, mm -hmm. banner and work day weren't communicated. Right. So the, everybody was still on work study budgets when they should have been moved to their hourly budget. So it looked like we had dramatically overspent our work study when the money was still there. It was just in the hourly budget. Right. But because it was all retroactive, the budget office didn't have a way to go into each person's individual unit and pull that money out. Right. So at the end of the year, the ledger balances, but it was very painful for everyone. Right. And it also disrupted work study spring and summer. Yeah. Massive disruptions. Right. Any other, any questions? Thank you, Dr. Scott. Thank you. Hold us accountable, ask us good questions, and you're awesome. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. I motion to adjourn this meeting. No, adjourn. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Everybody, who agrees, says aye. 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 Aye.